today is to thank Northlands Training Group. Um, sort of a moment's notice on a text on a day off, Gareth answered, and, um, and we're here. So we're very grateful for the hospitality, very grateful for the facility, and just to fly there, I'd like to thank them. Um, celebrating its 50th anniversary year this year. Um, centres in Accrington, Oldham and Bury. So to my mind, it's another flagship for, for Accrington, for Heimberg, another amazing Accrington business. Delivers apprenticeships at level two to five, traineeship study programmes and courses for the unemployed. So there's a constant push in trying to make the borough better. And some of you might have spotted a, an education summit we had a few weeks ago. We are pushing very hard on lots of fronts. So whether we're supporting the football club, the supporters club, and a, thanks to Peter yesterday, I was made an honorary member of the supporters club for Accrington Stanley, which, which went down very well last night, thank you. Um, we're looking to fly the Frank for Accrington and make it a better place and push it forward. So this journey in terms of the last five days has been driven by me being out in the field, talking to Accrington businesses in my day role as Scott Dawson advertising and Peter Scott's and some of those people are here today. And just having niggles in my head in terms of what's going on Murray, who are the candidates, what, what's happening. So as a business leaders forum, a business leaders group, we felt responsible that we should try and pull it together to ask the members um, the question. So we had a, a board meeting last Thursday and Mark Hope and Mark Schofield are here and unfortunately Mark Turner isn't from Langtech but we had a board meeting and said well it's very late in the day, very tight deadline but let's give it a run. Can we invite the applicants, can we have an open forum with them a debate and just talk about the borough. So we're, I'm grateful today that we've got Graham Jones here, we've got Sarah Brickless from the Conservatives, we've got Gregory Bluck from the Brexit Party in terms of Adam Slack, the Liberal Democrats gave his apologies, they, they were otherwise engaged. Katrina Brockbrank from the Greens, she's working so she couldn't make it unfortunately. But one of the challenges as I see is that <coughs> I want to speak to the LEP, Lancashire Enterprise Partnerships, and I'm with the Vice Chair there. And I talk about Heimburn and they're not too sure. Um, so we always use the word Accrington, so that's another challenge for us. What are we actually called and where are we exactly? Oh, it's that little thing in between Blackburn and Burnley. But then when I talked to her about the 85,000 residents, the 36,000 homes, 1,700 businesses, some of these businesses are worldwide leaders, you know, the Emerson and Renwick's of the world, the studios, etc. Then all of a sudden she said, oh, I didn't realise it was that big. We don't really focus on Heimberg, maybe we should have a look at it. So it, in one way it's positive, but in another it's negative because they've got the money to help in education and um, to push it forward and we're just missing out. So we're, we're challenging all those um, leaders in terms of look at us, fly our flag and help us. So the objective today, and um, we're very keen to keep it calm, so hopefully we, we, we kept it quite private in the early days in terms of where we're having this, so we didn't want any activists or any challenges around us. But in terms of what we're looking to do, we're looking to cut this as a video. It'll probably be an hour long and it's just an open video, so whatever is said on video, whatever questions are asked will be recorded and we're going to put that out. In addition to that, we've asked each of the candidates for just a very quick snapshot that'll be posted as maybe a one and a half minute video later on today from Amazing Accrington. In terms of their elevator pitch, what are they going to do for Heimbrun? What are they going to do for Accrington? What are they going to do for Haslingdon? So that's the take on why we're here today. And uh, we threw the questions out into the, the business leaders group. So I'm keen to ask the questions and then share it across the, the candidates in terms of an answer. So first of all, Stuart, you were first off the out of the tracks with a, a question. So do you want to go Stuart from HML Recycling in town? All right, yeah, so national stuff aside, um, let's, you know, we, we got the big sound bites about the NHS and all the different other policies. But my question is to each of the candidates, what specifically would they do in the borough to help regenerate uh, the borough of Hyman? Put that to you first, Sarah. Yeah, so firstly, as a group, as a council group, we've seen that there's 30 million in reserves and we see that there's 10 million that we could actually spend on that. There's also the High Streets Investment Fund that we could take a bite out of, hopefully, if we had someone that actually put an adequate plan in, which hasn't happened. Um, with that, we can rejuvenate the town centres, bring in more footfall, support our businesses, but it's not just about shopping. It's about supporting other business in Heimburn. What I've thought about there is reducing the cost for businesses, such as energy costs by maybe having solar panels, so they're reducing the cost, they can stay. There's a, a fit-out that I've thought about where a part of this High Streets Investment Fund 
say we wanted to attract a certain type of business, we would say, okay, well, we'll put some money towards that to fit that shop out for you. But if there's something else coming in that we don't want, we don't do that. So it's about supporting our local businesses, cutting the costs so they're able to stay here and make a profit, which isn't happening now. We've got so many empty properties on our high streets that we need to bring back in. Our council needs to bring back in, and our MP and council should have been working together to do that, but it hasn't happened. Graham? The town centre fund um, is signed off by Jake Berry. I mean, I've mentioned this before to Sarah. What contact has she had with Jake Berry, our neighbouring MP, who's the minister responsible for the town centre? But we have to remember this. We've got many town centres, not one town centre, Accrington. There's full occupancy in Aslindon and we've worked really hard. The Great Harwood one, it's easy to forget these places. Great Harwood worked really hard. The town centre, Queen Street, is doing really well. Union Road and Oswald Twistle's doing okay. And yes, there are issues in Accrington, but no different to anywhere else. But that's kind of superfluous to the real big issue. This is about prosperity. How are we going to bring, bring prosperity? And we've, what we've got to consider is our large employers and our medium-sized employers who provide jobs and income. That should be our focus. Now, the town centre does provide <coughs> some employment, but these big employers are world exporters. They produce goods that go around the world that we are proud of. So the question is, what is it that will make businesses more successful? Always, always, anywhere, transport is always top of the list. It has to be. If we make transport easier, transporting workers to, and, and sorting out congestion into the workplace, but sorting out transport so that goods <coughs> can come in and out and that workers <coughs> can come in and out and travel, that is really important. That's got to be at the heart of any prosperity agenda is the transport agenda. And that's why, as the MP, I've made sure that the M65 extension now is in the uh, uh, TFN's plan, consultation plan for transport, extending that to the M1 uh, and the A1. Also that cell wrap, the missing rail link, and we've got to start talking about other missing rail links. And if the council and councillors were really serious about the prosperity of the area, they'd start talking about cell wrap and the freight rail terminal that needs to go uh, uncaught on the rail sidings. Let's get serious about things that matter. If we want world-class employers and they're going to containerise stuff to the Port of Hull and Liverpool, let's start talking big, let's start talking the area up. A couple of empty shops in the town centre is not going to bring prosperity. What will bring prosperity is the big issues of the day. Thank you. Gregory? Well, I kind of... I don't think I can disagree with very much of what's been said, but I would say that, as I had seen the other day at a school, and the question was asked, who here is proud of where they live? And nobody put their hand up. I did. Yeah, well, you I did. asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that kind of that kind of that, that's part of the that's part of the problem, isn't it? If people aren't proud of being here, what's the point? What's gonna keep them here? I think what's gonna keep them here is opportunity. We kind of we give opportunity by properly investing. And now you don't want to talk about the national issue, but you know, you can't change business rates without it happening from kind of central government. You can't change corporation tax unless it's directed from central government, because these things are important for very small businesses. And where I disagree with Graham is, you know, if you've got a high street that's in absolute decay, then what does that say about the area? And I know it is Accrington, it's not Haslington, it's not Great Harvard, but it is, it is the centre of where we are. Now, if you put a cap on corporation tax, that means there's a 10, like we're proposing, there's a 10,000 headroom of payment which could be additional training, additional employment. And you know, things will grow. If you're kind of taxing those limited companies, and don't be fooled by the fact that Jeremy Corbyn says he's going to pay for his fantasy manifesto by taxing the, the oligarchy multinationals, it's all limited companies. So all limited companies will take a hit from, from, from a proposed lab, uh, Labour government. Don't be fooled by that. So we kind of, we give people opportunity, okay? We don't give them free stuff. Free stuff's great, okay? But we give people opportunity. And we do that by redirecting proper investment into the area in the form of regional grants. Everything else is great. Everything else is great, but it's kind of fluff around the edges. Unless you give people real wages, real opportunity, real ambition, a pride in where they live, it's going to fail. Would you like to reply to that, Stuart? Any thoughts? Well, all three um, candidates uh, sort of had elements of things they agreed with, things they disagreed with. As 
businesses as, as, an, as a local entrepreneur, you know, I do the basics, you've got to get the basics right. It's all good about the national pitch and I agree with what you say about corporation tax, absolutely right. You know, if corporation tax goes to back to 26%, which is what is Labour's proposition, then that certainly will affect our business and it certainly will affect the amount of money we put into some of the community-based projects that we do. Um, you know, but, you know, transport, yeah, I get all that. Parking, Accrington, Great Harwood, parking, and so does, there's a lot of good architecture and Blackburn Road at the front, and then you've got better architecture at the back and you've got a lot of rubbish in the middle. You know, compulsory purchase them, knock them down, think big. You know, you need more space in the town centre, mm -hmm. you need more open space if you've got to make it better. You know, uh, and I take what Sarah says about, you know, things you can do about individual attracting little businesses, little niche businesses, little quirky shops and things like that, that will work. Um, you know, Graham's right on the transport, on, on a national get, you know, people got to get in and out of the borough to, uh, and the big employers get uh, them attracted. Mm. Uh, and again, you know, the, the point about corporation taxes, you know, for me was, was the big one. Um, in terms of businesses. And well, uh, we better move on. I know they're trying to get through half a dozen questions. So another interesting question that came up was from Nick Westhead from Surface Print Company. So do you want to chair your... This was just with regards to Brexit. Um, what is it that the candidates think business wants? we we'll start with you, Gregory. <laughs> <coughs> well, I think it would be kind of presumptuous of me to kind of answer that in a way, but... I think that, you know, there was a clear mandate in the last, uh, in the referendum. And you could also argue there was a very clear mandate in the last general election where 80% of uh, the MPs voted, were voted in on a, uh, on a promise of us respecting the referendum. So I think that um, we've got to leave. And surely it's the job of government, it was a job of the last parliament, to mitigate the issues that are probably occupying all your all your minds, and they failed to do that, singularly failed to do that, and, provide, and failed to provide any security in your planning going forward. So, what do I think businesses want? I think there are some businesses that will say, "Well, actually, it doesn't affect me because I don't I don't export. I'm, a, I'm I'm purely kind of an internal market. I'm a I'm a, a small or medium company, and I can and I can withstand any of the kind of the issues that there may be with kind of." dealing with kind of the external market wherever that is. There'd be other businesses, slightly bigger perhaps, that are kind of are worried about the kind of the tariffs that will be applied and how they kind of manoeuvre their way around that. But, but what I will say from talking to the chamber in particular is that, you know, I mean, there are companies in, the, in this area that kind of export to 80, 90 countries around the world. And a lot of those companies will have different kind of terms, won't they? So, Dealing with another, tw an another, another one, if you like, in terms of the European Union, shouldn't be that difficult because you can you can take whatever kind of process and arrangement you've got for dealing with someone else, and you can and you can deal with it. I think that the the problem I think the problem you've got is the lack of surety, the lack of kind of clarity, the lack of direction, and you want to be told what we're doing. I think that's what you want. Am I wrong? Do you want to be told what we're doing? Well, well I mean, I don't know what I want to reply to that, but I, I, I think, or do you want to... Um, well, we can hear Graham from <coughs> there, and maybe we'll come uh, there's, to there's two things when I travel all the businesses. One is clarity. People, the first words that come out of any business uh, 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 manager or director is clarity and certainty. That's what people are asking for, above everything else. The second thing is favourable trading terms. So you'll speak to some of these companies and what they're, all, what they're interested in is the detail. How is it going to affect them adversely or otherwise or beneficially? And a lot of them are worried that the trading terms that are being proposed won't help them, some of the bigger companies. It will hinder them in one small way or another. But they're prepared to try and surmount that, but it is creating hesitancy. Both those are creating hesitancy. And that's why we've seen unemployment in this area rise from 2.4% to 5.6%. Because... Without that clarity and certainty, we're not going to make progress. And I'll just finish on, on a small point that Greg said about people obfuscating. I hear all this all the time. But I just want to make this one reminder. We didn't get a vote on Brexit MPs until the very end of the process. Not at the beginning, 
So to argue that it was blocked, I don't know how anybody could make that argument. And then when the vote was finally put at the very end, near the ending of Article 50, <coughs> it was members of the Conservative Party who voted down Theresa May's deal, the ERG, including Boris Johnson, who repeatedly voted against the deal. Now, you talk about blocking Brexit, you can't, when you've got a majority, which Theresa May had, if your own members aren't willing to support you as a majority, Brexit isn't going forward. It's as simple as that. And you bring the vote so late in the day, there's no point arguing that you've blocked it when there's been no votes. So on Brexit, I don't accept this point that it's being blocked at all, because if you look at the timeline, it just doesn't justify that argument. But coming back to businesses, it is really important. When I see rising unemployment because of, it, because of um, uncertainty, then that uncertainty must be resolved. And I'll finish on this final point. There are two <coughs> proposals on the table. One to get Brexit done, in, well, there's three. Brexit parties to repeal the Act, although I wish you would have said that two years ago and be more clear on what you say, but that's what you mean. Repeal, Which are, the, repeal the Communities Act. Uh, uh, you want a clean break. Repeal the 1972 Communities Act. You should have said that two years ago. I'm being clear. Not, that's not a, that's Brexit not, body didn't exist to you. That's not UKIP, but that's not. Well, I'm not UKIP, but let's just squash this now. But I am not UKIP. I would never have belonged to UKIP. I'm part of the Brexit party. I would never touch UKIP. Okay, Thank I, you. Right, and so and so the argument that was made should have been made clearer. Although I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making a political point there. The Labour Party wants to get it done in six months, and Boris is suggesting 12 months to do it. Now that's what you've got with the Canada-style. Um, agreement that Boris is proposing, that is very complex and brings more uncertainty. That's what worries me. We don't need that uncertainty. And what's going to happen at the end of the transition? Let's have some detailed arguments about what is on the table, what's being proposed and how this is going to work through. <coughs> and are we going to face a new cliff edge on the 31st of December 2020 when transition comes to an end and we've not negotiated a Canada-style free trade agreement with the European Union? And businesses then, coming back to the point you made, lack of clarity, lack of certainty. Sarah? Well, I don't, I don't know how you can talk about clarity and certainty when your party is openly saying that they don't even know what they'll do if there's a second referendum. You said the other day that if there was a referendum, you would more likely vote Remain again, going against what everybody here voted. 66% voted. Um, so, yes, what I think is that we do need the clarity, we do need the stability. That's what businesses want. They want the ground rules to be set because they can't work without those ground rules. We've got very successful people working in the businesses in Highbury, but the ground rules aren't there. And the only way to do that is to get rid of this rotten parliament, this hung parliament that we have at the moment, and move forward. And we cannot do that. And what Labour are proposing is to have another year of chaos, possibly another two referendums with the SNP. So we can't move forward as a country and as a constituency. And to say that you didn't block Brexit, you voted 11 out of 14 times against Brexit, Graham. So let's just be clear and honest with the people that are sat here, because that's what it's about. And if you had worked the way that people had expected for nine years, you wouldn't be in this position now where it's very close, where you could lose a seat. Why should we give you another five years to do something that you're promising in the pipeline? You've had nine years to do it. Your take, Nick? Well, I take is uh, I totally agree that clarity, is, clarity and certainty is, is and I'm talking very much from SME point of view. But, uh, to be clear, uh, that, that clarity, certainty is is paramount. Uh, totally agree with Sarah and and Graham. Whilst you're, you're saying all that, you're representing a party <coughs> that don't know what they're going to do, and your leader doesn't know what he's going to do, and and, it, and it's it's a, it's a really scary situation. If we, if, we, if we end up with a majority government, which I hope we do, I, I genuinely hope we can get things sorted out quickly. But representing a borough that l voted to leave and constantly voting against uh, you know, the, to, to, to vote the deal through is... Um, I don't know. I, 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 I don't understand. I, I can't understand your, your position. Well, if I could respond. So, we, there are obviously, since the Lancaster House speech, there's a, a Labour Brexit plan and a Tory Brexit plan because we were frozen out. So, I repeatedly vote for the Labour Brexit plan, which I think is better for business, 
So we don't want customs, we don't want customs tariffs, bureaucracy, we don't want to impose those tariffs on our major industries, such as the car industry, or even affect agriculture, such as farmers. We want to be clear about that. And the benefits of not having customs means that we solve the Northern Ireland border. And the benefits of having an alignment with the EU on the single market means that we can keep the rules very much similar so that people have certainty. The Labour position is very, very clear. It brings certainty. If we're going to go into a Canada-style free trade agreement, and you, and, and you may shake your head, but you, if we go into a Canada-style free trade agreement, that is very complex. You're going to try to negotiate each and every sector individually, and you're going to put uh, barriers in place for business exporting to our <coughs> biggest market, the EU. So therefore, for our major employers, and I know you're an SME and I appreciate that, but for our major employers, that is a big concern. We cannot have unfavourable trading terms. Now, my record is to vote for Brexit when Labour's put that proposal forward and the proposal I've just described. And that... I, I never interrupt you, and you always interrupt. Um, uh, is, is, that, is, to, is to support that plan, because it's the best plan for Britain, in my view, and for this constituency. It's the best Brexit plan, as simple as that. That is not voting against Brexit, that is voting against a Conservative Brexit that will damage workers and damage business, in my view. Not voting against Brexit, but voting against a damaging Brexit. And I think that that is a fair and reasonable position, and that's the position that I've taken, to support my constituents in what they want, these workers, what they want, as well as the employers. Can we just make a couple of points? Well, let's Sarah come back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you said thing. in your view. So I know when you started, you said that you were behind Ben and Haslington's voice in Westminster, not Westminster's voice in Hanvin. And that's what you've become. You've lost your morals. You've not become the voice here. Um, as far as it goes, you could have made these amendments when, and voted in favour of the second reading and put these amendments forward, but you didn't even do that. So it just shows that you've just blocked it at every time. So I don't know how you dare say that. You could have put these amendments forward, but you didn't. I think so that... We'll let, no. I, I would, uh, Sorry, you could ask me questions, but yeah, I could yeah. find you. Well, I think that Graham's answer was a kind of a typical career politician's answer, I have to say. I mean, and I, I think the problem that he's going to face on the doorstep is nobody's going to believe him, like a lot of you don't. And I want to pick up on two things he said, Northern Ireland border. Now, I've spent longer than anyone I know on the Northern Ireland border, and I certainly don't want to kind of go back to there. I was in the army for 25 years, did a number of tours out there on the border. And I certainly don't want to go back to that. Nobody wants to go back to that. But to weaponise it in the way that it's been weaponised is just outrageous. And we can solve the Northern Ireland border without having to kind of cling to the apron strings of Europe. And we've got, we're better than that. And there are, there, are, there are ideas on the table now that will actually solve it. So don't be fooled by saying, oh, we've got to do this because of Northern Ireland. Not true. Absolutely not true. There was another thing, but I've forgotten what it was. But, uh, <laughs> just just, just, just to come back to the point um, about, about blocking it, but Common sense dictates, look, the Prime Minister's deal was beaten by 230, 150 and, and 58. So that should have been taken off the table. Meaningful vote 1, 2, 3 and meaningful vote, vote, vote 4 was going to be defeated as well. The Labour Party's proposition came within 58, 7 and 3 votes. Common sense says put party politics to one side, I'll speak to you Sarah, Forget the Tory Sorry. deal, Sarah. Forget the Tory deal, right? It's lost by a huge amount. Boris Johnson voted it down. And go with the Labour deal because that is clearly the Brexit plan that most MPs support. And, you, and the problem is, is you have Conservative MPs who will not support the most popular and best plan in Parliament. And you are blocking it because when you come within three votes of getting Brexit through, which I voted for, come within three votes of getting Brexit through, then you should go with that. You have an obligation as an MP to hold your hand up and say this plan put forward by the, by the Labour Party is clearly the best plan, it has the most support, let's support it. Not play pe petty party political games and lose votes by 240 and persist with a meaningful vote that's going nowhere because it's a bad deal for Britain. And even 90% of voters in this constituency wrote to me and said, 90% uh, of correspondents that I received said it was a bad deal for Britain was the meaningful <coughs> vote and to vote against it. I did exactly what people asked me to do. Why don't we have common sense and go with Labour's Brexit plan that came so close to getting through and is the common sense plan? I think this leads us into the next question, 
that came from Ken Shackleton, the MD of Cardboard Box Company. Unfortunately, can't be here today, he's in Southport. So we've got Mark Schofield from Howard's Accountants, who's going <coughs> to push that question. Thank you, Mary. Do any of the candidates feel that a hung parliament can be considered anything other than a political farce, given the issue of Brexit has been the main item on the political agenda for the past three and a half years? Or do they feel that this is the moment in British politics when democracy is set for a future, co future of coalition governments as no party is likely to represent the majority of the UK voters? Let you go first, Gregory. God, I'd like to have it in writing, actually, because I've a lot got kind of lost halfway through that. But, um, <coughs> yeah, no, we'd love it. We'd love a hump on I mean, I'd love to have 30 Brexit MPs in there, <coughs> holding Boris Johnson's feet to the fire and fighting for a, fighting for a kind of a Canada plus plus kind of free trade agreement. That's what I would love, and I don't have a problem with that. I think, um, does, it, does it usher in a new kind of... Um, uh, regime of um, working together, well, per perhaps it should, and I think our proposals to, you know, change things and shake things up, both at Westminster and a kind of a local level, is, is a good thing. Proportional representation, I think, is a, is a really good thing, and that may well, and that should usher in a new way of doing things, and it should be a more collaborative approach, but um, we've got to get, I hate saying this, because it's so trite, but we've got to get Brexit done to borrow a term, to borrow a phrase. We've got to leave the European Union. And then we sort that kind of stuff out. I kind of, I, so, I don't know, have I answered your question? I, I, I don't know, I think pros, possibly yes. Am I frightened of a hung parliament? Absolutely not. Uh, is, there a, is, there, is there a way forward where we can deal with things? Well, there should be, shouldn't there? We're a, we're a mature democracy. Look, we've had a thousand years to build this democracy. No one's given it to us. We've forged it, we've made it, we should not be ceding it to some other supranational power called the European Union where commission to commission dictates what we do. We should be making those decisions. Us, the people of this country. So however way we do it, it's ours, it's currently our mess, we need to fix it. Graham? Well, we voted a majority government in, in 2015. We ended up in a mess. We had a majority for Theresa May in 2017, and that didn't work out. So you would argue on the face of it that majority governments don't actually work if we look at the mess that this current country is currently in right now with its government. So um, it's not an argument that stacks up. Are coalitions any better? That coalitions are exceedingly popular on the continent. I'm not personally in favour of one. I will come to the issue of a coalition, the SNP, because you keep raising it. I don't understand why you don't follow local politics. I've said repeatedly at the last election, and I've said repeatedly at this election, I don't <coughs> care what Jeremy Corbyn's position is, and it isn't, because I've spoken... Let me finish. Let me finish. I meet with him every week, because I'm on the parliamentary committee, and I meet with him, and I put this to him time and time again. He's very clear. No referendum for Scotland. So in the no first, in, in, And no coalition. So if they want to support us, that's fine. But it'll be on our terms. No coalition. Personally, if the Labour Party flipped its position and said that we would have a referendum, I wouldn't vote for it, and I'm on, I'm on record as saying that. And I wish you'd tell the voters that. I will not vote for a Scottish second referendum. There is no need for one. As for the coalition... I don't believe that we should have a coalition. If Labour are asked, if, if Jeremy Corbyn's asked to go to the Palace, to Buckingham Palace, to form a minority government, I'm happy to do that. Not in coalition. And if people want to bring us down, that's fine. But actually, we've got to be looking at, beyond that, at trying to win a majority at some point. Maybe in this election, maybe in future elections. But we're not for giving up. We're fighting for workers and fighting for this country. And that's, just, that's all I see in front of me, for the best for this country. And what, whatever we end up with... That is not determined by me, that is determined by the British public. They will decide. But there will be no deals with the SNP, and this MP has said at 2017, and I'll repeat again, I don't care what the Conservative Party position is, I don't care what the Labour Party position is, you will not get me voting for a second referendum for Scotland. I don't know how many times I have to repeat it to you, Zara, but I'll keep repeating it. But it's not you, is it? It's your party. Mo it's your party. So you're one person out of a party, so you're not going to stop that happening, Graham. You can't do that. So there are, um, there are a large are group of us, there are, no, I was just going to say, uh, there are a large okay. group of us who won't, who will not, who will not vote for, an S, for, a, for a second referendum. And Jeremy Corbyn knows that. Okay. Sorry. Right, OK, so the, the question was about hung parliament. We do not want that. We need nine seats to have a majority. 
Uh, we've seen what's happened with the coalitions. We've seen that we've had three <coughs> years of nothing, really. We've not been able to focus on anything. So, no, we don't want another hung parliament. We do not want a coalition if we can help it. We want to have a majority in government. We want to get Brexit done. And I know you say that line's getting boring or whatever, but it's true because we can't focus on anything else whilst this is happening. So, yes, we do want a majority. We don't want another hung parliament. And that's a clear answer on it. The 130 ERG who are going to come next year cause absolute mayhem in the transition period. You can't do anything. There's more than 130 coming into this parliament. The, the Conservatives have had a majority for the last four years. In the last two years of Brexit, they've had a working majority and still managed to divide parliament. So what makes the voters believe and trust you with 130 ERG that if we gave you a majority that you'd still manage to get Brexit done when you haven't managed to get it done in the last two years? and it's been Theresa May and Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, exactly. not a Labour Prime Minister. You've been in charge, you've been given the authority and you've failed to deliver because you've that many rebels. And, what, and, and how can we trust you, for those rebels, not to appear once again kibosh business for their own ends because that's the way they are? And I think, what did David Cameron call them? Some, some rude name? You know, that is where the Conservative Party is. If you get a majority, it does not mean that Brexit's going to get let done. Let Sarah just say the last yes, So it's very clear, uh, our stance has been clear all along. Uh, all 635 Conservative candidates have pledged to back the deal, so it will go through. Very simple answer. And the clear. trade deal? They pledged to back the deal. All and, Boris, and Johnson's, the all the Boris deal. Johnson's candidates have pledged to back the deal. You know that. So you're just basically what deal? saying... You're what deal? Boris Johnson... Deal. What deal? The divorce the deal or the trade deal? The de divorce deal. You keep right. calling it that. There's a transition period where we can then negotiate trade with other countries. It's not a divorce deal. It's actually a very sensible option in terms of rather than a clean break Brexit because we're not walking away without um, not on friendly terms. We're walking away where we can negotiate with other countries while still having that friendship and connection with the EU. Where can I just say this is the reason why you shouldn't vote for these two parties? <laughs> you really shouldn't vote for these two parties. We need surety, we need to leave, we need to leave with a clean break, and then all those other side deals that we need will come into operation because we'll have the whip hand. Look, you're in business. You don't negotiate away your position at the very beginning. Come on, Mark, it's obvious. I'm going to bounce into you because I know we have a few more. And I know before we came in here, do you want to admit to who you said you were going to vote for? <laughs> um, Go on. I, I'm, I've always considered myself to be a floating voter with a Tory bias. <laughs> um, but I look at the current That's state. That's what you said earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming to that, I'm coming to that. So I look at the Labour Party. I can't vote for the Labour Party. I think you've been a fantastic constituency MP, Graham. I think you've done a really good job. But unfortunately, your party's in the thrall of a, a load of, of, of the left wing and they're going to wreck the country. So I'd vote for you as a man, but I can't vote for you as the party. I look at the Conservative Party and I look at Boris Johnson and I think he's just completely untrustworthy. How can I vote for a man who's as untrustworthy, whose words seem to mean as little as he as, he, as, he, as him? Can't vote Brexit because I think we should stay. Uh, I can't vote Lib Dem because we had a referendum and the country voted to leave and we must re re respect our democracy so I'm left with two alternatives. My preferred, co my preferred party isn't standing and that would be the monster red in loony party <laughs> because they represent I think the situation very well so what I'm actually going to do is exercise my democratic right to vote and spoil my paper. That was just an interlude. So <laughs> <laughs> I, knew that was I bet that makes the cut. <laughs> I <knew> that was <laughs> coming. So I knew just to calm things down. So thanks for that, Mark. How do you wind up for that one? But it, it leads me into the next one. And unfortunately, Miranda Barker, the Chief Executive of the, the Chamber of Commerce, um, you know, there's 900 businesses who are aligned with the Chamber of Commerce, so we court her opinion very well. Unfortunately, she can't be here today, but Mark Hope's going to be representing the Chamber with the question. So I'll hand over to you, Mark. Yeah, so, so one of that, the hats I wear is a, a director of the Eastlands Chamber of Commerce. Um, so a question on behalf of, of, of the, the business community um, was really what are you going to fight for when you're down in London on behalf, not just of Highburn, but, you know, the whole of East Lancashire, Lancashire as a whole, in terms of, you know, helping businesses to, to trade internationally. You know, we've got a vibrant community of, of uh, importers and exports in the area 
um, and you know the, the Northern Powerhouse. You know what are you actually going to kind of really work for in the region? Um, but I'm just going to jump in a little bit on the end of that question. Um, when when in the Chamber of Commerce we discuss slightly Brexit, just to finish off on that one. Um, more often than not, the consensus tends to be we just want to know what the rules are going to be and we can deal with it. Um, you know, for the last three and a half years, we've heard the same the same talk really, um, and that a lot of businesses do export all over the world. So you know, the European regime, yes, it will be a headache for them, um, but most of them seem to be perfectly willing to adapt once they know what the deal is going to be. Um, but actually, I've never heard anybody in business say my view is more important than all of my staff's view, for example. I think businesses understand that we live in a democracy, and I, for one, am proud that we live in a democracy. I'm proud of living in Hyman, by the way, as well, and I would have put my hand up at that school event. Um, you know, born and raised in Oswald Swistle. We haven't mentioned Oswald Swistle, but... Um, and um, yeah, I think it's more important that the business community lives in a, a safe business environment, um, and we live in a democracy. Um, and we had a referendum. Uh, so whatever happens, whichever party is in power, we've got to listen to that. Um, and I'm afraid I share, I think, a little bit um, <coughs> the view that, Graham, you know, you've done a great job for him, but you really have. Um, but to, to have been elected, sorry, you know, the Labour Party manifesto was to honour the referendum result. And it's not happened, to be fair. So are the Tories, you know. Um, the, the refer it, it, something's got to happen and, and to say that it's too damaging for business, business doesn't, if business says it's too damaging so it mustn't happen well they're against democracy so you can't have that well, anyway I'll just, so, so just really back to that question really um, about, about what, what, can, what can happen well, back to Miranda's is. question what are you going to fight for locally in Heimburn so we're often sat here in Heimburn looking at the bigger brothers next doors etc we're looking at parliament and Miranda's take is, what are you going to do for us here in East Lancashire and Hyndburn when you're down in London? So, to you, Sarah. So, firstly, if there is a majority government of Conservative government, it's not. There's no point really having an opposition MP. It's very difficult to fight for something there. Um, so, I think the best thing would to be have would to be have to be have mm -hmm. to have a Conservative MP here. Um, I think we need our fair share of resources. I want to bring the northern powerhouse out of the cities and into the towns. I think it's essential. Like you said, I understand, and that's what I've said, we need the ground rules to be set for businesses because until that happens, nobody knows. We need the stability. We need the certainty of what we're doing. And that's what I, my answer was to the gentleman over there, that we do need those ground rules set because we have the, the knowledge and the people, with the successful people in this borough that know what to do once those rules are set, but we need to make sure we get our fair share of the resources into Hyndburn and Haslingdon and into East Lancashire. Gregory? Well, I think I kind of part answered that question, the very, the very first question, because a lot of it's to do with kind of national government and, 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 and the spending plans that they're going to they're gonna bring to this area. I mean, there's no two ways about it that um, the Tory government have ignored the North. I mean, you know, Northern Powerhouse, is, is that any more than just a slogan? You have to kind of ask yourself, is it really any more than that? Um, you know, we talk about transport, and Graham kind of talked about that, and I agree with everything he said. I mean, extension of the, the motorways, but, you know, there's no bus that runs along the valley between Blackburn and Flipping Cullen. I mean, how are you going to get your, vo uh, your, your, your workers early in the morning from one place to another. Where's, where's the flexibility? I mean, you've got to tackle these really small problems. And one thing that I've found is kind of stark in the people that I've spoken to is, you know, we've got a, we've got a borough council, which is Labour. We've got a member, of, had a member of parliament who was Labour. And well, where's the joined up strategy within those two kind of institutions to kind of create the business focus? I mean, where's the business focus in Hyndborough Borough Council. I mean, who do you go to as businessmen or as leaders of business groups to talk to the business focus or the, 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 the business outreach or what have you got? There's nothing there. There may be something on paper, and there is actually on the website, there's this, but there's no one there, there's no one occupying it. So, I mean, and the other thing is that for, for, for business 
To really operate well, you need a flipping holistic approach to the whole thing. I mean, we need tertiary education here. We need a range of housing, not just social housing, but we need to bring people in, we need to bring in the kind of middle managers, and they need to have the housing in order to kind of, to, 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 to exploit the, the, you know, everything that's on offer. If you can't bring the right people in and make this an attractive place to come and work and live, and bring up and raise a family and all of those things and you're kind of you're flogging a dead horse a bit so what would i do i would use my energy to make sure that those kind of interactions at a local level worked and there was someone there that you could talk to i mean that's what i would do i think you know we've touched on all the kind of regeneration of the high street and that was a that was a disaster i mean but you know we just i mean it's, there's got to be a more collegiate approach isn't there look and i'm i'm very comfortable doing that i've kind of I don't know if I've said this, but I've worked on, lived and worked on four continents. I've, I've been in the army, I've finished up a fairly senior position. I've kind of, I've worked in New York in property. I've kind of, I've got experience. I've got the people skills to be able to bring people together, maybe knock a few heads and maybe kind of help them along. So, you know, it's bringing people together, working out what we want and using the resources that central government gives us. We, I've already talked about, you know, we are going to cancel HS, HS2. We're going to use the money that we pay into the European Union. We're going to half the foreign aid budget, and we're going to use that headroom. And this is actual money. This is cost neutral, by the way. It's not fantasy promises of a, you know, of a billion, billion pounds being used as headroom from some secret credit card that the Labour Party and the Tory Party, let's not forget, are kind of using. This is money that is there, ready to be re redis redistributed into this area. I mean, not all 200 million, of course, but we're going to be part of that whole thing. And we're going to partner with, with business. We're not going to take over flipping Wi-Fi and connectivity. I mean, you know, that's just crazy. You can imagine John McDonald running a flipping startup tech company and offering free... I mean, it's just bizarre, bizarrely ridiculous. You've got to partner with people to make sure these services are delivered properly. <coughs> that's what I would do. Great. Well, the, the question was, what have you done with the local district council? And as I said, it set out when I got elected, we've only gone and built the largest industrial estate in Lancashire over at Whiteburk, bringing thousands of jobs, um, uh, hundreds of thousands of square feet of industrial capacity and employment capacity to this borough. Um, and I have to say, you had 13 years in power with your father as the council yeah, leader, Sarah, yeah. and, and that was never achieved. There were never, we never had these ambitions. And this isn't talk. That site's gone up now. We've been round it and had a look. People can look at that with pride and say, yeah, something's been delivered. It's not just that. We now have the Apprenticeship Awards, which I was um, uh, I instigated with the, with the council. You talk about partnership. We've got the Heimann Business Awards now. We're here with Amazing Accrington. All these business um, uh, uh, elements uh, have happened under my watch as MP, and I'm determined to support business, and I have supported business. We now gold plate the service to businesses um, at the council, whereas before they were just given a cold shoulder and a closed door, unless they offered something to the political elites at the council. Um, uh, now it's an open door, you can go in on planning or any other issue, you ring up and it's a response. We're there to serve business, we've served business, we've delivered for business, we'll continue to deliver for business, and let's go back in time to those wasted 13 years Previously, when people voted Labour, George Slim <coughs> built the Globe Centre that employs 750 people in there, 1,000 people in there. Great, I'm sorry, the question is about the national policy. No, I, well, I, I'm going to come to that, but it was about local, it was about the local council and, and the MP. Um, so you, 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 you... No, it wasn't. It wasn't you, you look, well, well, I'm just answering that question. To the national, to the national policy, you know, I, I think that um, uh, there has to be an investment in the north, as Greg says. We've got this... Uh, Northern Poor House, as it's been nicknamed, because there's no investment in the North. It's gone on for over 70 years. So it took me seven or eight years to get the line from Accrington to Manchester in, for example, which is important to, to have that connectivity. But I led the campaign, and in the end we got it. It's taken an, an inordinate amount of time to get cell wrap through, because it sat on the government minister's desk and he won't sign it off and then he wants to sign it off as some low passenger transit um, a line instead of a heavy goods line and we don't want that so there are these arguments that need to be had I won't go to Westminster and be patsy I will go to Westminster and do what I've always done and fight hard for this area so you look at some of the investments nationally that need to come in 
as part of the Northern Powerhouse, they're simply not coming in unless you have somebody who A, understands and has the experience, and B, is going to fight damned hard for them. And that goes with the M65. No one was talking about extending it past Boundary Mill. But we need it. We need to be on the transport map. I've gone down to London and fought for that. And where is it now? It's not talk at an election on election leaflets. It's in T uh, Transport for the North consultation plan. It is done. It is in there. But that's not even half a job. There's far more to be done. So you've got to go on and press hard. You need an MP who understands the issues and is going to fight for national money on the local table. That's what's important, and I will continue to do that. And there are other things that need to be done. But I'll come back to the point that was raised about the council. We have built the largest industrial estate in Lancashire. It's a box that's ticked. It's not one that I'm promising at an election. It's one I'm reflecting on after nine years of hard work. And that is an incredible achievement. And when people get up and say that Graham Jones has done nothing, I think they ought to look at themselves and ask themselves seriously, is that true? Are they telling the truth? Because it clearly is not the case. We need to move on, Mark. What's your take? No, I, I, think, I think, as I say, you know, you've done a huge amount for the town. Um, you know, it's not, I, won't, I wouldn't actually argue with that. Um, but you know, this is a, this is a national general election, so the national politics, re, you know, in terms of investment in the region, <coughs> it's going to come from the party that are all parties that, that ends up in uh, in Westminster. You know, um, so that we just got to see what happens with that. Um, can I just say as well, Jake Barry is coming to Highburn today, so if anybody would like to come and speak to him, you're more than welcome. Um, so if you speak to me after, Can and we'll talk about the Northern Powerhouse then. He is the minister for the town centre fund that you keep going on about, and he did signed off that we did. Yeah, we did. No, you didn't. Um, that's what it's come back as. You didn't put an adequate plan in. It was all about road infrastructure. That's not the main focus. Um, so speak to your council about why we didn't get it, not because it's biased or whatever. You, you are a councillor on that council. I'm in opposition. You're a councillor. You're in charge on that Sorry. council. You're a party. Sorry, just to ask the question. Yes. Is that why Nelson and Darwin got it? Nelson and Darwin got, I, I think, about 20 million. 25 million. 25 each. million, yeah. Right. And that's why they got it, because of their the, they, they put a plan in, yeah, that right. was accepted. We didn't. Zada, we physically spoke to the councillors and they didn't know why they got the money, did they? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Physically spoke because they put the adequate plan in. Two years Tony, ago, right, two you? years ago, representing amazing Accrington, I spoke to as high as I can go in Highburn and said the DUP have had a billion pound deal, and we have forty million pounds in Highburn for the town centre, and I was just laughed at, mm. laughed, just turfed away. People and then two years later, no, but two years later we look at our neighbouring towns, and it was Mike Dams who said there are three nomads in East Lancashire: Darwin, Nelson, and Accrington. And we didn't get the money, so part of why I'm here today is to fight our corner for what we want. Yes, it's a national election, but what do we get in mind? <coughs> I'm hoping to have a camera where somebody stands up and says, you're going to have this in two years, or you're going to have this in a year, or we're going to be fighting the corner. That's what I'm looking for out of the, the day to day. And that leads me on to Brendan's question. And uh, I know that <coughs> as business leaders, this group was formed just for the benefit of everybody here, because it wasn't a business leaders group. In Mike Dam, he was the chief executive of the Chamber of Commerce. Clitheroe, uh, Ribble Valley, Burnley, Blackburn, Rosendale, they've all got business leaders groups. And he shook his head and said, forget it, Murray, there's no empathy in Highburn, there's no empathy with the businesses and the council. So we put the effort into joining that together. And it's about communication, to my mind, about what do businesses need. And I know you've had some success with that, haven't you, at Surface Print, in terms of asking for things through the business leaders group. So we, we see that there's a communication that's been lacking. And that also leads on to another question, which will probably be the last one of the day in terms of the name of the borough. What are we looking for? But Brendan, do you want to chair your question? Uh, yes, I mean, my question is very similar to, to Stuart's, uh, who, who made his at the very beginning, is that uh, to the candidates, um, I'm the president of the Highland Chamber of Trade, which represents a... Uh, a, a Across a selection of uh, independent businesses in Heimburn, um, and I would like to know what would your key objectives be uh, to uh, facilitate growth and support for uh, either independents or, or small businesses or national chains in the retail trade in the town centres of Heimburn and Haslington to try and reverse 
some of the uh, neglect that we've seen in Accrington, because there are a fair number of empty shops uh, in Accrington. It's not just about you know a few empty shops, Graham, as you mentioned earlier. It's, I think it's about 25% of the shops in the town centre. So we're not able to attract people into the town centre. So it's more of a, a, a grassroots question. So it's what's the objectives for the town centre and what are yeah. we going to be delivering? So Graham, your process. Well, to again, I come back. There's nearly full occupancy in Aslindon and Arwood, and we mustn't forget that. We're talking about Accrington here, which is like <coughs> many towns. There is an oversupply. I don't believe people are spending less money in Accrington, but when you open great big supermarkets, which has been government policy for the last 40 years, then obviously there's going to be competition. That money's drawn out of the town centre. In fact, I probably think more money's being spent but just not where it used to be spent. A fraction of it is now spent in the town centre. And we've got to look at national government policy because if you've got... Exp the overheads are incredible. Either we have private landlords with huge rents or exorbitant rents that people clearly can't afford, and we have national business rates, which punish. So whilst your Amazons and all your big warehouses that are shipping it by rail mail get away with paying no tax and a very small amount, <coughs> competing in the same market, you have... The supermarkets competing in the same market, you have these online retailers competing, whilst our uh, retailers in the town centre have to pay these exorbitant business rates and rents. This is a case of national government policy has to change. I'm not saying I agree with the Labour Party's position on this. I have a very clear view. We must lower and equalise business rates and rents if we are to have the market conditions that allow those uh, retail facilities in the town centre to succeed. Now, whilst we have the current government policy that we have now, we have to think differently. And doing that is shrinking the number of retail units. So we need investment in housing. So you're starting to see that where we talk about town centre living and bringing people in. We've got to have a, what is a backup plan to try and do something. You will have seen planning applications go in for housing. It's about generating it, about turning some of these into upmarket flats in the town centre and trying to change the dynamic and bring service industries in. Or other things that are, uh, are tactile, so that when people come in, they need to feel them before they buy them, or they're a service industry, as opposed to just box shifting and uh, uh, commodification and sales through of commodities or white goods, etc., which are long gone. So we need to have a very clear view, and that's the view of the council, and it will encourage this. But whilst we don't get the money from the government for the town centre fund, deny it to us, won't give it to us, say that it's not quite right, the bid, so they'll throw Accrington under a bus, that we're not going to succeed. We need to change national policy, and the government needs to recognise, instead of a northern poor house, it needs to invest in Accrington. And that, as I said, when the question was asked by Zara, who's proud of their area, there was only one of the three candidates who put their hand up and said, I'm proud of Accrington. Because I have and, a question. And I am proud of it. And you didn't put your hand up. Because but I, I am proud of it, and I did put my I hand up. Question. And I'll always be proud of it, and I'll always fight for it. But to answer your question, there are national issues and there are local issues. And, and to take Mark's point, I agree. I don't think the part, any of the party, uh, parties have got this right. I think we need to think about it. But like alcohol licensing, there a number of areas where this country needs to rethink radically the way it expects to challenge some of these issues that we face and I don't think anybody is facing up to them and business rates in the town centre is a classic case why should it be the same in London as it is in the northwest or Accrington or wherever else why do we have that and why do we have these disparities between online and supermarkets and town centres we have made it so that town centres can't survive we've set them up to fail not Accrington everywhere and that needs to change. Can move on to Sarah? So I think we all know that the Conservative Party is a party for business and entrepreneurs. We want people to succeed. We always have done what we've seen with, although you're saying you don't agree with them, you are part of the party, so why did you not turn independent and fight for the people, Graham? Um, I would be the people's representative, so I would come and I would listen to what we need and I think that's what we're missing out on at the moment. We haven't had someone. I don't pretend to know everything. I don't because I, I can't, and everyone can say that, and at least I'm honest about that. Um, but I will listen to what is needed here. I will, I will fight so hard for the investment to come back into hand and make sure we get our fair share of resources. The Northern Powerhouse, like I've said, bring it into the towns, out of the cities and into our towns, and get our fair share. But we need a voice um, in Westminster who listens to the people, and we haven't got that right now. Gregory? 
I think it's kind of it's, it's almost too big a question in a way, isn't it? Because I mean, it affects just every kind of facet of facet of life. From kind of town planning, surely that's that's a big issue. You've got a ring road. We're talking mostly about Accrington. You, you've got a ring road around Accrington that that kind of makes people kind of go around the town centre. So, you know, we need to look at the kind of the town planning there. We need to look at kind of some of the things that Graham talked about. Actually, I mean, you know, bringing tactile things into the town centre so people are kind of encouraged to come in for an experience rather than just maybe a you know to shop and that's that that that's also key we need to kind of i mean we really need to kind of <coughs> we need to sort out the kind of the the occupancy levels and cutting business rates and which is what the brexit party is saying outside of the m25 we're cutting business rates okay and that will encourage more people and, and hopefully you know we won't have this bloom of kind of charity shops because they don't pay business rates there'll be other enterprises that are set up to, to, to do likewise as well you know limited companies are going to get a talked about it already ten thousand kind of pound headroom to really kind of invest in more stuff or people or or training or whatever it whatever else it is but i think that you know it, it i mean you know the bus station where it is is that best place and how can we kind of better use that to bring people back to the market, which is now devoid of the, the customer footfall that it, that it had beforehand? There just seems to be a lack of a joined up approach. And it's easy for me to say, because I've not been in government, I'm not involved in local government, but maybe that's what we need, isn't it? Maybe that's what we need. Somebody to just say, well, why did that happen? You know, we're not talking kind of left and right here. We're talking kind of common sense here. Why did you do that? We need to kind of, we need to have a, a system and a process to be able to kind of look at these bright ideas and kind of say, well, that bright idea may be not work here. And what Graham says that Accrington is just a symptom of the rest of the UK, I tell you what, you, know, you don't have to go too far down country to see other towns who are struggling likewise, but not to the same degree as Accrington is. And I'm sorry, I, I don't buy that. I really don't buy that. I mean, it's a proud town. And we should actually, you know, we should kind of think about its history and work our damn bestest to kind of, and you only can do that, you're only, you're only gonna do that with the proper funding and the proper system and mechanism in order to kind of create the opportunity. No good, I've said this before, no good throwing free stuff at people. You've gotta throw opportunities at people. Unless you do that, it's not gonna fix itself. But, you know, we need to look at the whole thing. I've talked about, you know, transport, housing, you know, all of that is important. Education, tertiary education within this this area because you're only going to draw people in by offering the whole range of kind of stuff that people want from their from their town from their region i think from the research that we've done what we need is a champion um, somebody to actually rise to the challenge to to make change and push it forward so there's lots of initiatives that have been mooted around and when we look at other boroughs um, it's somebody that floats to the top that wants to take it on and build a plan and push forward and pull that together and create an attraction. So the analysis is there, but often the funding isn't there, in my <coughs> opinion, which is what we've been pushing for. And equally, coming back to some of the comments earlier on about the secondary school pupils not being proud of the borough, that supports our research that we did, that the secondary school pupils, the first thing they want to do when they leave school is get out of Accrington. And one of the other ideas with the amazing Accrington initiative is to make it a lot prouder. So when we look at, say, the football club that was challenged years ago, I was on the board 12 years ago, and that was a, a challenging um, period. The hat going around the table to pay wages every week, etc., and hadn't paid the water bill, hadn't paid the rates, etc., etc. But there was a champion that went in there, Andy Holt, who's actually turned it around. He's got us into League One, and it's bringing inward investment into the borough on Sunderland are playing. So that I know we need to be fast. So that leads me on to Peter Leatham's question from the. Accrington Stanley Supporters Club, which is a, a different direction altogether and one I didn't expect today. Yeah, it's just a, a sort of break from the sort of party uh, politics, really. <coughs> the national game coming under increasing pressure, um, not least with the, the amount of money that's actually going out to the game into players and agents to be Sky TV monies. Um, would you support the uh, formation of a, an independent regulator to actually oversee the whole pyramid of the game? And not just pump to the uh, to the prima donnas in the Premier League. Gregory, yes. <coughs> Greg, uh, I just <coughs> wanted to pick up on a part of that last pride argument. That just to mention to people about the town centre, the council's budget in 2010 <coughs> was was, was th just over 30 million. It's now under 11 million. I just want to point that out when people say about the council its ability to do things, cut by 
the government. Coming back to football, I agree with Andy Holt. We need an independent regulator, and Andy's made some other comments. I've also sent the speeches that I've given to Andy in the House of Commons back to 2012 because we had trouble down at Ewell Park as well. And I think the proposal that we put the supporters' clubs on the board of directors is also helpful because there needs to be some transparency in football. We look at Coventry and we look at some of these other clubs, there's no transparency in football and this isn't a free market. People support their clubs and they mean everything to them and they won't swap. It's not like a supermarket, you can go and swap from Blackburn to Burnley or Burnley to Blackburn or Accrington, whatever. So, so, so it is a monopoly effectively and we need to treat it as that and there needs to be better regulation for that, for that purpose. But there are also community assets, so therefore there needs to be that investment because you cannot have a situation where a club like Berry goes bust and the community has lost not just a football club, <laughs> it's lost an asset, it's lost a community. So it is vitally important, and I know we are proposing to put supporters' trusts on boards, that needs to happen, and an independent regulator, and a better financial structure, and money from the top down to the bottom to grassroots. Because let's not forget that grassroots does not receive the funding that it should receive, and it should receive more funding. There's money. Some of these Premier League players' wages will pay for an all-weather pitch. One week's wage will pay for an all-weather pitch for some of the kids around here. You know, and that is really important, that we look at this in the round. What value, and we've all seen what value Accrington Stanley has to, to this area. Sorry, it's just flagged up to me that she's not really into football. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to work out if that was a yes, was it? Oh, it was more than a yes. I think when you said Canada Plus Plus, I think it was a yes I plus plus. To, <laughs> I was hoping for a quick question, three quick yeses. Um, but just to, to support Sarah, I don't actually like watching football, I like playing it. So even though I was on the board, I did say to them that you might see me leaving halfway through. I like the commercial, but I find it boring sometimes watching. But anyway, the Bolting game was good, Gareth, a couple of weeks ago. So I'll send Sorry. You, I'll send you Sorry. the process. I can speak Sarah. to you later about it and discuss it, but I, I'm not very... I think it's transparency in football, to my mind, and under, yeah. underhand work, etc. And it's a community asset, you know, we can see that with Accrington. Uh, yeah, I recognise that. Um, and it's it's not just in Accrington, it's all over the borough that yeah. Accrington Stanley's rec all over the world. Um, I know when I go on holiday, if I say, where are you from? They say Accrington. You never say hi, do you? This, this <laughs> <laughs> no, we did that. You never got an problem. answer on your name change, by but, the way. Uh, this leads me to the... Are you happy with that, Peter? Can I move yeah, on? absolutely. Um, so I was absolutely right about the... The realm of Africa is a support pub. We have to have it members in 18 different countries now worldwide. Yeah. Oh, and that's important. amazing and it shows what we have here and we need to keep building on that. I know we I was talking to... earlier on and I know when we got involved with Accrington Rosendale College it was called Acros. So the first thing we did when we were involved two years ago was change it back to Accrington and Rosendale, you know, to build the civic pride. In terms of Accrington Stanley one uh, we won't say names, but somebody said, I wish it had just disappeared. You know, the tear comes in your eye and you think, jeepers, you know, it's the only thing that people know about Accrington. And, um, and then we have Andy Holt that's pushed it forward. But one of the challenges we have, if I live in Great Harwood, it's a Blackburn address, so I pick my post up from Blackburn. The postcode is Ribble Valley, so my house might be worth more, I don't know, in Great Harwood. And then if I pay my rates, I pay them to Heimburn. I was with a business last week who'd relocated to Heimburn. He was moaning at me that nobody had really been to see him. Is anybody bothered? And I said, well, we're bothered. We're sat in front. You know, we're keen to promote your business, etc." And he said, I drive past a sign that says Altham. I drive past another sign that says I'm in Heimburn. And then you're here from Amazing Accrington. I'm not too sure what you're trying to tell me. So one of our challenges, when you're in the, or you've been in the Houses of Parliament, do you say you're from Accrington or Heimburn? Always Accrington. Um, and district um, and, and, and what I would say is politics is about doing so we had a boundary consultation and I was one of the few people who put in that the boundaries for, uh, under the re reshaping of the constituency boundaries that this constituency should be called Accrington and district now I hear all sorts of people say things it's like the town centre fund how many emails did you send who did you speak to what communication did you do look at the consultations that went in for the change of the constituency and you'll see that mine was in for Accrington and district right and that's what it's about it's having pride putting your name out there and making sure you fight for the <coughs> Not talk about it. In my 20 years in ex uh, at politics, there are too many people who talk about it and don't do it. And this is a classic example. Why didn't people submit Accrington and District if they're proud of Accrington and District? Rename the constituency to what, it, what would be more beneficial in terms of business. I appreciate that there's Arwood and Aslington and it's difficult. I appreciate that. But this is about jobs and selling yourself. And Accrington is famous, proud town. Do it. 
Put your name into the consultation. Do it. Don't talk about it. Do it. So Graham's a yes on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think what we've just heard there is one of the reasons that it's not called Highburn because Graham doesn't even go down to Westminster and say Highburn. He says Accrington. So when you talk about being proud of everywhere, mention all of the districts then because like we know we've got Oswald Twistle, Great Harwood, like everybody's said. <clears throat> so it needs a voice for all of that. And yes, a name change would be great, but you are then cutting out the other places as well. At least they feel included in that. We do have an amazing borough. We've got the community spirit there, as you'll know with Amazing Accrington, we have the community spirit here. Um, but we just need to bring it together. There's so many groups where they aren't together. It's all separated. We need to have that one a unity and bring it together in maybe a consortium or something so people can discuss that. Um, but I do think you need pride in the whole area, um, not just Accrington, because Accrington is <coughs> what people call it, but I want to be able to say, well, I come from Oswald Twistle, and people recognise where it is, and that's important as well. Everybody knows Accrington through Accrington Stanley, so let them know the other places as well. Would that not count in terms of the largest townships known under the name of the borough, Ellsworth, Burnley, or and people from Simston are still proud? Would they not still be proud to be? From of course, Austin, they'd so? still be proud. But mm. I think are the they, name are they change. Proud of <coughs> I think we need to make people proud of Hamburn, and that was a concern to me when I asked the students. And you're saying I didn't answer my own question. I don't usually answer my own question, Graham. Um, I asked the question whether people were proud, um, and the fact that two students put their hand up worried me because after being a student I know that it's a lot more attractive to go to the cities and stay in the cities rather Point than of all of us, home. Chairman. The, the question is are you proud of Accrington? Not proud of Am Canada. I proud of Accrington? No, 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 no. Accrington. The question you posed was are you proud of coming from Accrington? I said no. No, I didn't. Heimburn. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much, You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. Well, well, the, well, majority okay. rules are you proud of coming two to three. Yeah. I, I know we're running short yes. time, Gregory, yeah. so do you want to... Branding, I think, is kind of really important. I mean, it, I think it, ha it has to be Accrington, doesn't it? And I think with the kind of the, the boundary change, which is in the pipeline, yeah. and that makes Accrington much more central. You could argue Clayton Moores might be, but I don't think that would ring. But I think you can't call this, you know, East Lanks West or Mid East Lanks or, or, or Heimbun. It's, it's, just, it's just a kind of a... Yeah. It's just a ridiculous kind of concoction which kind of doesn't hit any notes. Accrington does hit a note, Heinemann doesn't, and any other name that you... You may come up to try and be more inclusive, hits no notes at all. And if you're going to brand yourself a, around, you know, Accrington Powers, Accrington Stanley, yeah, John course. Anderton from Yes, well, we get, we'll get there maybe. But, you know, you need, you need, it needs to be <clears throat> Accrington, it has to be Accrington, so, in my view. But then what would you do about Haslingdon, who already don't feel included? Well, they won't be there on the boundary change rules. That... Good point, Greg. But these boundary changes haven't gone through. Well, they've, they've, well they've, they're about to be signed off, aren't they? No, I mean, they would have been signed off no. had we they not... Have... No. You were spot on, what Greg, we're saying and they'll is come back. How are we going to bring it in right now? We but need to still include those places right now when it's not gone through. Well, well, we can't I, just shut them I out. don't want to be funny, but only Greg and I have raised Aslinden in this issue, and all no, Greg no, and I have raised Great Harwood. Not true. Not so, true. So not I just true. want to point and when it out. I've been to Haslinden, they said they've been felt like they've been ignored by you, Graham, so don't even go up there. Well, I, I know that we need to be closing up pretty soon because we're running tight on time. Um, from my point of view, it's something that we've been challenging for a long time, and we changed the name from the Lifestyle magazine, which was soft, meant nothing, to Accrington, to be proud and to put the civic pride back in, and that's why the events have been happening. And the supporters club yesterday, when I treated them to a chippy lunch, all 20 of them, um, on Church Street Chippy, they said that, wow, these events are great, it's what people see, the public. So I think we've got to do lots of things well. And um, it's just a consideration and it's open for debate, so that's why we were keen to raise it today. We're all on camera so we can look back at it in years to come, hopefully. <laughs> and be held to account. <laughs> <laughs> they were all warned beforehand, so we, did, we were transparent on that. But is there any other very fast question that's a yes or no? Mark? Uh, Greg, you said you were going to cancel HS2. We are. What that's are our plan, plan, yeah. Why? It's that's absolutely that vital to, that to the north. It's absolutely, going, it's absolutely vital. To it's a huge yeah, amount of money for Let me finish. I only speak once a year, and this is it. <laughs> 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 
there's a massive inequality between the north and the south. And HS2 is going to be vital to start to redress that inequality. Well, I think, I think what it, you know, you cut your cloth accordingly, don't you? And I think that actually there's more need for a kind of transportation west to east in the north of the country than there is north to south. That's my view. That's the party's view. We will redirect that money to make sure that business happens here. I do agree with you that, you know, we need to look at it, but I think that needs to be downstream. So we need to fix what's wrong up here. And then, I mean, you know, we need to kind of increase the industrial base, don't we? I mean, people talk about productivity. You ain't ever going to uh, increase productivity with service industries. It's got to be industry. We want to fix the industry, and then we, when we've got the goods to transport, that's when we need to do it. Sure, it needs to be, it needs to be a strategic plan, and it needs to be jo joined up, but the priority has got to be east to west up here, in my view, and my party's view. I, 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 I agree with... Uh, not, not the HS2 bit, slightly different, but I agree with Greg's point that the priority is east-west. <coughs> That's why the cell wrap is so important to connect the port of Liverpool to the port of Hull, so that all our goods can move. In fact, we could take goods from continental Europe out the deep sea port of Liverpool. It is vital, and as Greg says, that transport is key to everything if we bring major industries and rebuild this economy, and I agree with him. I actually think on HS2 we've got to be mindful of the budget. The detail here is causing a problem and we need to be very careful about that. But I would rebrand it the Great British Railway, not HS2, and I'd take it all the way to Scotland because I'm a unionist, I believe in the United Kingdom, I believe in Britain, and, and the Labour Party's plan is to take this up to Glasgow. But I think it should go further. If the Norwegians can build these tunnels and railways, or tunnels for cars, for roads essentially, then so can we. And we should be looking to bring this country together. HS2 can be <coughs> the great British railway for the whole of Britain. Sorry, you need to have the last point and then we're wrapping. So I think, I think we need to improve the connectivity. It, like, like they both said, it's not about just Manchester to London. It has to come into the towns and cities. And I think the review of HS2 will do that. They have to understand, and I know the question was raised at conference about this, to make sure that we actually see some investment in our areas from HS2, which is essential. Um, I don't think cancelling it's the right thing to do. I think we need to review it like they are doing. They are looking into it more now and trying to find point the details and make sure it is right. Um, but I, we need to make sure that it's not just between London and Manchester, Leeds. It needs to be back into our towns so students, for example, can get to Manchester quickly. We need to assess all the transport links and it's very important to do that. So no, cancelling it is not the right way forward, in my eyes. I'd like to thank the candidates for turning up today and giving us the time. Um, it's been enlightening for me in terms of some of the comments, some of the thoughts, some of the collaborative thoughts. So, but equally, I'd like to thank yourselves for coming and equally those who are here today who pose questions so that we've, we've pushed forward. So this is going to be really <coughs> later on today as the full cut. Plus, we also asked for a, a 30 second elevator pitch that we're going to put out as well. And I'd just like to thank you again and thank the candidates and wish them all the best. Thank you.